movement, music, moving to it. Put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty and strife. And if you know about the music, then you know about life. This is movement, music, moving to it. Put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty and strife. And if you know about the music, then you know. Good evening. Good evening. All right, yeah, this is going to be a. Hip hop oriented. I'm gonna be using hip hop as a point of departure to uh, deconstruct a lot of different issues to get into some things that maybe some of us, uh, myself included, you know, have been programmed to to take for granted um, on a daily basis. And, and taking certain things for granted often plays a, a major role that benefits other folks who profit and exploit our communities day in and day out, week in and week out, year after year, decade after decade, generation after generation. So we're gonna get into the often untold um, history of hip hop, but it's almost kind of like a misnomer because we're gonna get into so much more. We have a lot of ground to, to, to make up. Huh? These, these are all, all racist images. If, if I can't find a black person to do it, I'll get Al Joseph, I'll get a white guy, put the shoe polish in his face. Look at the old Tarzan movies. I want you, this is, remember in the, in the beginning I said it's about critical thought and about honing your critical thinking skills? When you watch one of those old John Wayne films, he's riding on the horse, he's riding on the horse and chasing after those, those savage Indians, There's those savage Indians, woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, chasing after the savage Indians. Who created the stereotype that Native Americans were savages? Well, they're eventual oppressors, people that came and stole their land, they created that because if you demonize somebody and you turn them into a savage, then it makes it more palatable for other people that might step in and say, nah, stop doing that, Solomon. Stop doing that. So it was a, a, a lie. A lie. Stop doing that. But if I, if I call him a savage, then it, then it justifies what I, all the awful things that I want to do to him. And then you create TV shows and you create movies and they're fighting against Native Americans. You create all that stuff. Come on. They did it with African people, black people, barbarians. They're barbarians. That's why we have to enslave them. We're bringing civilization. The root word of civilization is civil. If you think that being castrated and being hung up and having your fingers chopped off, you know, as, listen, I'm telling you real, real stories. If you knew of the barbarity that was done and, and having 5,000, 4,000 sometimes people come and watch, watch as if they're at a sporting event. Watch somebody being strewn up there and hung, and then they're trying to grab the chain, because oftentimes with a chain, and he's cracked, and then there's a fire at the bottom, because they didn't want them, to, sometimes they didn't want them to die so quickly, it was the sport, they wanted to see them suffer, and then they would chop finger off finger, where it's just, now you can just slap the chain to try to, to try to get up, and you can't anymore, and you can't anymore. If that is the civilization that someone's bringing to me, that's civilized, I don't want no part of it. But we've allowed ourselves, because we're not critical thinkers and we don't delve into history and, and all these different kinds of things, to question and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, you didn't bring, you bring no, you not bring no civilization to Native Americans. You don't bring no civilization. You didn't come there to try to help them. They didn't they need no help in the first place. You didn't, you didn't come there to try to share the land and, and to join them as brothers and sisters. Nah. So you demonize them. And that's where it works. Because at the same time, you have these people that existed. The Ida B. Wellses, you had the, you had the, the Fan Lou Hammers, you, you had the Bessie Smiths, you had the A. Phil Randolphs, the W. E. B. Du Boises, but these people. These people weren't asked to have their likenesses placed on, on these products. On these products. These, these are products that were used. They, they didn't do that. They didn't do that. They didn't come and ask Du Bois or Bessie Smith because these people represent the greatness in African people, the greatness in black people, the greatness, because they, and they represent a resistance to white supremacy and oppression. That's what they represent. So you can't do that because you know what? If you do that, then you start to have little white kids seeing black people as equals to them. You'll have the little white kids starting to say, to, to actually looking at some of them as, as heroes and sheroes. So you can't do that. You can't do that. But yeah, we got this. This is for you. This is for you. This is for you. These are bad images. These are clearly bad images, right? Clearly bad images. But these are the popularized images. These are the popular images. Popular images that are put out there 
They've been popularized, so we don't ask the questions. We see it. We make excuses sometimes. Some, some, sometimes folks are ready to, to fight, knuckle up. Sam, so, what, what are you talking about? This is my favorite rapper. What are you talking about? Despite the fact that your favorite rapper is openly degrading you. And, and you know what? And you know what? And he has an overseer that's controlling him like a puppet. So, yeah, he's doing the dirty work, but there's somebody above him that's saying, yeah, that, that, that music's green light. That, that music is green light, brother. That, that music's green light. You could do that. Okay? Trust me, there's things called lyrics committees. And you have folks like Jimmy Iovine that green light that stuff, and they profit off of black death. So you have Jimmy Iovine going to Chicago and getting an impressionable, um, very misguided Chief Keith and, 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 and selling him left and right. Left and right, man. Jimmy Iovine profiting off of that. And you know what? The rest of the songs in the album that talk about bang, bang, shoot them up, directed at black men, bang, bang, shoot them up, the great black women that stand in, that's fine. That's not too political, man. Because I say so. I'm Jimmy Iovine, and this is my lyric to be committed. I say so. I don't care if you degrade your community. I don't care if you talk about black death. Because it's not impacting my community, it's impacting yours, and I'm going to profit off it every step of the way. You know, but unfortunately, I would say, based on my work and my travels throughout this country, the testimonials I've, I've heard, you know, one-on-one -on -one and in large, large group settings, you know, people would always tell, even my students tell me, they come to my office, and they tell me, Professor, I didn't get any of this stuff in, in, in high school, I never got this stuff in middle school, I, never, I didn't get any of this stuff. Didn't get any stuff. When we learned about black history, it started off with slavery, which is important. It's important to learn about someone's oppression, someone's long-term oppression over 400 years. It's very, very important. Very, very important, right? If someone is of the Jewish faith, they're taught at a very young age, never forget. Never forget about the Holocaust, never forget. Never forget. But I've seen, because of the way this country is structured, you know, if you're in certain settings, you know, you talk about slavery, you know, people say, oh, no, no, don't talk about that, don't talk about that. You know, let's not talk about that. But yet, in the, in the high schools, you know, um, on the other end, they start off that history there. And African people's history goes far, 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 far. We're talking about thousands and thousands of years before shadow slavery, shadow slavery ever, be, ever began. We're talking about a continent where before the advent of race, and slavery and colonization, all these, these evils, before that even happened, we're talking about Europeans. There's no qualms whatsoever. There's no issue to go into ancient Africa. There's no issue going to al Land, which is you know what, one of the names that indigenous people called Africa, al Land, going there and studying from, from, from black Africans. All right, they call them the mystery schools. They, they were the, some of the, the first universities on the planet were there. And they would go and they would study these at these Egyptian mystery schools, these Kemetan mystery schools. And they would study there. They would go to places like in, in West Africa, where um, Sonia is from, all right, she's from Togo, but they would go into Mali, uh, a place called into Timbuktu, which, you, which you've heard, you know, here to Timbuktu, a place called University of Senkor in Timbuktu, and study there, and study there. There was, there was, no, there was no issue with that. So you're not talking about that, you're not talking about hieroglyphics. You've heard of hieroglyphics. Mm -hmm. The original name of hieroglyphics is Metonetum, word of the gods. This is the original, the original so-called Egyptians, the original commands. Because Egypt, as we know, Egypt was a name that was given to that part of the world, that country in Africa, in North Africa, by the Greeks. And the Greeks came in, but the original Egyptians were called themselves Kemetans. They were Kemetans, all right? Kemet. And they called it Metronetra. They called what we call, what we've been taught to, to call hieroglyphics, they call it Metronetra, which is the word of the gods, all right? And hieroglyphics, um, you know, just like, for instance, the word Egypt is land of the blacks or, or city of the blacks, and that's what the Egyptians call. The, the original Egyptians looked much like many of us in this room. Very, very dark to perhaps maybe as light as myself. So this whole, when you watch like, for instance, the mythology that they have on TV, when you have like, uh, you know, uh, Night at the Museum, uh, 
if you've ever seen that movie, but uh, many, many movies where you see like a pale-faced person playing like a, uh, an Egyptian pharaoh, that's mythology, pure mythology. It's been pure proven, carbon testing. We know that they had very, very dark skin because they followed the Nile River, which goes from south to north, and they came up from Nubia, which is now known as much, much of Nubia is known as, as Sudan. As a matter of fact, Nubia, Sudan, has a times as many pyramids as does Egypt. Yeah. This is the kind of lyrics that we got. My forefather was a king. He wore fat gold chains and fat ruby rings. Nobody believes this to be true. Maybe it's because my eyes ain't blue. You're not going to get this from your history book. Come here, young blood. Let's take a look. They're talking about this is 1989, and they're telling the, the youth are talking about this in hip hop songs, saying our history is not reflected. There's no balance of history in other history books. Where's the Native American history? Where, where, where's, where's the African history? Where's the Black history? And I'm going to tell you something unpopular. I'm going to tell you something really unpopular right now, but it's true. So they won't give you that other history. They don't give you a balance of history, right? I won't give you a balance of women who have done amazing things, Native Americans and their struggle and their plight as it continues to go on. Our struggle, our plight, our successes, major successes, the fact that people from all over the world used to come and study the, among the first universities on the planet were in the great continent of Africa. University of St. Cor in Timbuktu, Luxor, Karnak, we can go on and on. They don't tell you this. They won't tell you any of that. But they will tell you that George Washington's your founding father. Oh, what do I have against George Washington? Well, you know what I have against George Washington? As I said before, if you are if you're doing things that are unjust, I'm not celebrating you, period, period. Well, George Washington happened to be a devout, proud, <coughs> proud slave owner. He owned 317 African slaves, 317. So you want to call somebody your founding father that if you, that's fine, that's your business. But understand this, that if we put you in a time machine, or the hot tub time machine, put you back into, you know, the time where, you know, where he was alive, anywhere near his plantation, they're going to snatch you up and you're going to work till you die on his plantation. So I'm not celebrating anybody that does that. Nor am I celebrating Columbus, who was, uh, killed millions and millions of people. I'm not doing that stuff, man. I'm not doing that stuff. Okay? I'm not doing that stuff. But there's people that you can be celebrating. What about William Lloyd Garrison, who was also a white man around those times, who was against the institution of slavery, spoke out loud against it? What about Frederick Douglass? What about all these folks? Okay? Those are the folks you need to be celebrating. Because if you're going to celebrate people that did bad things, it's going to somehow rub off on you in some shape, form, or fashion. Make it a note to learn about your history. So these are issues that are discussed today in rap music, but they don't play it. They don't play it on the radio. They don't play it because they don't want you to think. They don't want you, dare I say, to turn out like somebody like me, who was inspired by that kind of music that now, years and years and years later, is now using that music as a vessel to talk to you about the truth and to talk to you about the dawn of a new day and to visualize it and to be visionary, to see not just a new United States of America in a new world. As one of the most important things that I would like to identify myself as is a social activist, somebody that spends time, boots on the ground, in the community, um, week in and week out, going into, into the surrounding communities and where I, where I live, doing everything that I can to give back to those communities and making sure, as, as an independent journalist, making sure I bring the issues, as we know, especially those of us that are, that are black and brown in this room, the issues of our communities are oftentimes, seldom, ever, if ever, and we're gonna get into that, we're gonna get deep into that, are ever portrayed accurately or even, period, you know, on the corporate media airwaves. Play it, man. If you wanna have some song, you, you wanna come out, and you wanna be like Jasiri X, who is like an incredibly gifted rapper from Pittsburgh, who should, you know, if all things were fair, He'll be played on every single radio station, but they're not playing him because he's talking about social uh, police brutality. And you had a good point where you said, 
our generation doesn't want to hear it. I would say your generation doesn't, not all, but some people in your generation, as well as my, they don't want to hear it because they're not exposed to it. Because they think that things are, are we've arrived. Things are great. Let me tell you something. In 1968, when, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, 1968, you want to know for every dollar that a white household pulled in an income, we as black people were pulling in 54 cents. Okay, you say, damn, that was a long time ago. That's why rappers don't need to rap about that stuff to, to, today. You know, if there was even rap at that, at that time, you know, they could have rapped about it, which we had spoken word artists like the Gil Scott Heron and, and the last poets that were, that were talking about that stuff. There's, there's no reason for that today. Well, you know what, you want to know something? In 2014, which is where we are right now, for every dollar that a, that a white household pulls in an income, we're pulling in roughly 59 cents. 59 cents. 59 cents. So that's a nickel. So there are, trust me, there are people behind the scenes that, 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 that know that there are a lot of black and Latino people who are currently oppressed that have no idea why they're poor. They think that the only reason they're poor is because, oh, they don't work hard enough. And they're, and they're saying, like, yo, we, we got a bunch of happy Negroes. They think, they think everything's great. You know what I'm saying? They have no idea the half. They have no idea that the income. And, and as long as they, they, don't, they have no idea how wide the income level is, and as long as they have no idea that there's a real thing called institutional racism, why would, they, why would these youth get together and start a social revolution? A social revolution. Why would they do that the same way that that their mothers and grandmothers and grandfathers did gener you know, years and years and decades ago. Why would they do that? Because if you don't know that you're being oppressed, if you don't know why you're living in conditions as such, if you don't know why the police routinely police your community that way, and as long as you think, that, oh, that's because we, we must be just be doing drugs more than that's, what, that's why they're doing it. Uh, um, as long as you believe that way, they're like, they're never gonna, they're never gonna band together for an extended period of time consistently, consistently in the terms and do what it takes to start a social revolution. And the reason why I'm looking I'm talking about this generation is because when we talk about the Black Panthers, when we talk about Bobby Hutton, that brother was 15 years old. Now he was 15 years old. We talk about Fred Hampton, he was 20, 21 years old when he when he was gunned down. We talk about Huey P. Newton and, and Bobby Seals, they were college students. They were young, they weren't old folks. These revolutions were started by young people who had a lot of energy, but they knew what was going on. They knew what was going on. Okay? So a lot of the issues that we think have gotten tremendously better in the last 40 years have actually gotten worse in some major categories. That's why I say facts are the facts are the facts. Our opinions, our perspectives are something totally different. Well, I think it's for just repeating this over all It is. I think our generation is bad because we are the future. And what we take in is that's what we're going to teach our kids when we get older. So it's like it's getting worse and worse and we're not taking in the information. If I want to make my full dollar off the dollar yeah. and not just that 59 cents, yeah. and this is the reason why I, I just don't do stuff for myself. I do stuff for y'all. I do stuff for people in the community, everybody, because like Solomon said, once you know, you got to tell other people, right? you got to tell other people. It's a social responsibility that we have, especially as black women. But you don't have to take it on. It's, it's a responsibility. It, it, exactly. The nation that continues to spend more money on military uh, defense than on programs of social uplift is heading for spiritual doom. And this was a man of the cloth. This was a, this was a church coin man. This was a pastor. This was the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. So yes, he chose his words wisely because he meant them. He said a, a, a nation that continues to spend more money on military, military programs than it does on, on, on social programs is headed for spiritual doom. What's changed? And he also referred to the U.S. as the greatest purveyor of violence on the face of the earth back in 1967 as well. What has changed in 2013? Very little. Where you have a government who, who spends a trillion dollar plus dollars uh, the last several years on war and military and industrial complex, a thousand military bases throughout the world, but yet spends 77 billion dollars, 75 billion dollars on education. And right now, Education, we have schools in Chicago, 50 schools are slated to be shut down. 
You have all that money. They don't need to be shut down today. These same narratives are covered in hip hop, but you don't hear about them. They're covered by artists across the board, artists that are black, white, Latino, but it's suppressed. You have artists like Brother Ali, you have, as I said before, Dead Prez, and we can go on and on, and they don't play him. I mean, most deaf, for God's sakes, who was one of the most popular, you know, underground MCs, they, they don't play his stuff, okay? That is premeditated. They don't want folks, young folks, especially young folks of color, to be exposed to these narratives, to see the, what, at the, what is at the root of their oppression. They don't want to see the roots that are connected to poverty that is entrenched in their communities. They don't want them to see that. They don't. Malcolm X said, no one. It, it's foolish to get on people that don't know something for the first time. Everyone didn't know something for the first time. This information, I didn't know for the first time. I didn't know this information. I didn't walk, I wasn't born into this information. But when I got it, I had the opportunity to, hey, I'm going to run, take it and run with it. So I think people have need to be given the opportunity to be, to be presented with this information. If it's not being presented in schools, then it's our job to present it to people. Now, if they run away from it and say, I don't want that information anymore, uh, then that's, that's their prerogative. But we must give them the opportunity. We must be collective and communal about it. Music moving to it, put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty and strife. And if you know about the music, then you know about life. This is movement music, moving to it. Put a fist up, prove it to us. This is much more than music to us. This is beauty and strife. And if you know about the music, then you know.